Okay, so we're going to look at some revision materials for the waves topic of IGCC physics. So, so let's get started with the types of waves that you can have. Uh, so we're talking about transverse mechanical waves. So mechanical just means it's more, we're making particles oscillate. So a transverse mechanical wave causes the particles in the medium to oscillate perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer, whereas a longitudinal wave causes them to oscillate parallel to the direction of energy transfer. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So let's first draw a diagram to illustrate a transverse wave. Uh, so this is a tr very typical transverse type wave. You can see the wavelength is marked as the distance between peaks and the amplitude is the distance from the center line up to a peak. Okay, so transverse mechanical, mechanical waves travel fastest in, uh, the correct answer here is solids. And the reason is that a mechanical transverse wave requires strong intermolecular bonds to travel. And that means they don't travel in gases and there's only a couple of liquids like water uh, that they can actually travel in. But that's why it works best in solids. That's where the strongest intermolecular bonds are. So let's actually have a look at a transverse wave. So you've got the blobs on here to mark the particles of the medium, which you can see oscillate up and down, whereas the energy is being transferred left to right on this illustration here. And so you can see the particles never actually collide with each other, which is why you need the strong intermolecular bonds so that they all move together when you start oscillating the one on the far left. Okay, so let's move on to longitudinal waves. So first we'll start off with a diagram here. So essentially a longitudinal wave is made up of compressions and rarefactions. A compression being regions where the density is slightly higher, a rarefaction being a region where the density is slightly lower. And then we've got our wavelength being marked between two adjacent compressions. So this is uh, it shown on a spring, but you get exactly the same thing with uh, molecules when you have a longitudinal wave as well. So you get these compressions and refactions. So a longitudinal mechanical wave travels fastest in a solid as well. So mechanical waves, as a general idea, travel fastest in solids. So the reason being that this is different, so this isn't about the strong intermolecular forces anymore, so in a solid the particles are packed very close together and that means the sound wave can travel quickly from molecule to molecule because that's how the energy is actually transferred from collisions between the molecules. Okay, so with a liquid or a gas, they've got much larger spacing between the molecules, so it's going to end up taking much longer even though the particles are actually moving faster in, in those states. Okay, so this is our illustration of a longitudinal wave. So you can see, again, energy is being transferred from left to right, but if you actually look at the particles, you can see they are also oscillating uh, left to right and then back and forth. So they are described as oscillating parallel, and you can see where the compressions and rarefactions are formed. Okay, so electromagnetic waves. So all electromagnetic waves travel at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. If they're in a vacuum or air, in other materials, they can travel slower than that, but they can never travel faster than that. So the visible spectrum in order of increasing wavelength, so the shortest wavelength is violet, and then the longest wavelength is red, and then we follow this uh, pattern in between. And then the, the whole electromagnetic spectrum goes like this. So the shortest wavelength is gamma rays, and then they're up to the longest wavelength, which is radio waves with visible light right in the middle. So electromagnetic waves travel fastest in, uh, that would be gases. So it's basically the opposite of a mechanical wave. And the reason being, electromagnetic waves are slowed by interaction with atoms. Uh, so they, a electromagnetic wave doesn't require particles to travel, which is why it can go across space. In fact, if it encounters atoms, then they are actually slowed down. So if you travel through a gas, they encounter fewer atoms along the way, and so they have the fastest speed. Uh, the fastest would actually be in a vacuum where there are no atoms. And then therefore, on the opposite logic, in a solid, they encounter the most atoms, so they travel the slowest. 
So moving on to look at sound waves. So a sound wave is an example of a mechanical because they rely on the movement of particles. So sound doesn't travel across the vacuum of space, for example, which is good. Otherwise, it would be very loud. And they're also a longitudinal type wave. So they rely on forming the compressions and the refactions. So the pitch or how high a sound is, is determined by the frequency of the sound wave. And then the loudness is determined by the amplitude of the sound wave. Uh, so a bigger amplitude means a louder sound. So most humans, our ears can pick up anything in the range 20 to 20,000, although that top number does come down as you get older. So sound, uh, as we said, is a mechanical longitudinal, so we'd expect it to travel fastest in a solid and slowest in a gas, and indeed it does. It has a it's in the region of 3,000-ish for a solid, about 1,500 for a liquid, and then just 300 for a gas. Okay, so we're going to finish off by looking at dispersion. So this is what actually demonstrated that white light is made up of all of the colours of the spectrum. So let's first draw a diagram to illustrate the process of dispersion, and then we'll look at explaining how it works using Snell's law. So if we shine white light into a prism, the first thing to note is that the dispersion starts at the first boundary. So you can see they're already splitting up into the colors. And then at the second boundary, they are just refracted at that one there. So the dispersion happens at the first boundary. Okay, so the question is, why does this happen? And the key is the fact that the different colors travel at slightly different speeds. So let's look at that. So that's, as I said, the first thing. So red light travels faster than violet if the medium is not vacuum or air. OK, so this only occurs when you actually have the interactions with atoms and those kind of things. So red light travels faster in glass, which is what the prism made of. So that means the refractive index for red light is slightly smaller, because remember, um, refractive index is the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in the material. So if the speed of light in the material is bigger, that makes the refractive index smaller, or they're inversely proportional. Okay. So that's the first thing. The next thing is actually thinking about the law we're going to use, Snell's law. So n1 sine i is n2 sine r. So let's actually think about the first boundary. So at the first boundary, the medium is air. So all the waves travel at the same speed, which means N1 is the same for red, violet, green, whatever you like. And they all have the same angle of instance because they're all traveling in one beam of white light. So they all hit the boundary at the same angle. So that means N1 sine R is the same for all of the different wavelengths at the first boundary. So if red has a smaller refractive index, that's going to give it a larger angle of refraction. So if N2 gets smaller, sine R has to get bigger. Okay? So that gives us our larger angle of refraction. So that's it. You see that. So you can see I've drawn a normal in here, and you can see red light does indeed have a larger angle of refraction than the violet light, which has the smallest angle of refraction. And that's why we get this dispersion of light.